Readers Entertainment presents Book Lights, where we are shining the light on good books. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Readers Entertainment Radio. This is Lisa Watson, and no, you haven't reached Book Lights. You have reached Readers Entertainment Radio show, and I am very happy that everybody is joining us here this evening. I know you all have a lot of things to do during the week and many pulls on your time, uh, so I just want you all to know out there that we really do appreciate you taking the time to kind of stop in and listen to the show. And you will be glad you did this evening because we have a very special guest. She will be the new host of Readers Entertainment Radio. So tonight we're kind of just passing the baton, so to speak. Um, But I won't be straying too far away. I'll be hosting these special event shows as well as um, hosting the In Faith Network Radio Show as well. So my guest tonight, let's talk a little bit about her. She is a romance author, journalist, and retired pediatric and adult critical care nurse who's made her homes in Texas, New Mexico, Louisiana, and Missouri. After having a fantastic time at the University of Texas, Hook'em, she decided actually to attend class because that would actually help her in her long-term goals getting to them much faster. She buckled down and in eight years earned a licensed vocational nurse certification, then an associate's in nursing, and finally a bachelor's of science in journalism. During that time, my guest worked in multiple fields of nursing, including medical, surgery, surgical, recovery room, orthopedics, telemetry, ICU step-down, and critical care before she settled on the unpredictability of the emergency room. For five years, she worked in general ER before she ended up at the Children's Medical Center of Dallas, a level one pediatric trauma center. She retired from nursing in 2002 and started writing full time. She has written for many publications, including iVillage, Hot Moms Club, Modern Mom, Dallas Child, American Journal of Nursing, The Writer's Edge, Nursing Spectrum, and Chicken Soup for the Soul series. For the past two years, she's had a monthly book pick segment on San Antonio Living, a local morning show on WOAI. She's a member of the San Antonio Romance Authors, Sarah. And so I am very pleased to welcome Patricia Walters Fisher to the show. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you. That intro made me sound really, really impressive. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and and I'm, I'm laughing because I have like this huge pile of laundry on my couch, so that it just doesn't sound as impressive as <laughs> the laundry that needs to be done. Well, you know, everybody <laughs> says that, and it's so funny because sometimes people are like, wow, I'm sitting here listening all that, like, wow, that's pretty cool. And then she's like, yeah, hey, really, you're talking about me. I'm like, well, hey, yeah. <laughs> I can't make up impressive, you know, you make it up. So definitely, and I trust me, I understand about the whole laundry thing and, and, and all that other stuff so absolutely welcome and i hope you're nice and comfy yes because yes, we are going so. to Thank get you. started so okay. you've got a new novel out burning with desire so can you tell us yes. a little bit about it um jane porter the founder of too late publishing uh had created this town of marietta montana and it's part of her Montana Born series with Tule Publishing. Uh, last year, I submitted for um, one of my, my indie books, and they actually had asked me, instead of picking up that book, to pick up, to come in with this project. And it turns out that they um, have a, in, in the Marietta, they have a town, I'm sorry, they have, in the town of Marietta, they have a fallen firefighter, um, and everybody wants to do something in his honor. So they decide to start a Boys and Girls Club in town, and the city donates the property. Um, there's two parts to the series. There's the first five books, The Sweet uh, Bachelor Bake Off, uh, where they raise money um, through uh, the bachelors making something. And, of course, through the Bachelor Bake Off, there's uh, you know finding the happily ever after, um, with the hot guys in town, and it was very sweet. I got in on the second half of the series, which was the Men of Marietta, and it turns out that this this building that's been donated also had foundation issues. So they had to raise a lot of money 
to fix it. And they came up with a calendar idea. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm part of that, and I'm the fifth book of that series, and there's five authors in that series as mm-hmm. well as five authors in the first series. So um, the Burning with Desire brings together two new characters to the town, um, and one is a Texas transplant. And um, it was fun because I got to talk about she's the new owner of the Main Street Diner. She gets to come in in this very wonderfully established um, place in town and bring in kind of her own flair, getting to know the the people in town. Um, She's also uh, a mother who's adopted a child. And so I get to bring in some things that are really important messages to me. Um, And it was just a a really fun project. Really, it, it, we had to uh, talk to each other, and I put your guy in this part of my book, and it was like we were all at a table putting together different parts of a puzzle, and then finally the whole mm, thing came okay. together. Yeah, it was cool. great. So tell us what your favorite scene is in Burning Desire, if you have one. Um, yes, there's. It, it's funny when you start writing a book when your characters just kind of take over, and... Uh, I remember sitting here laughing to myself as I was just typing. It's like you become almost possessed with these people. Um, and <laughs> there's this great scene where they first meet, and it's ext- an extremely awkward meet. Um, and she approaches him again. Um, he he catches her in the house she's renting because um, he's the next door neighbor. She was supposed to go to him for the keys. There was a miscommunication. He catches her in the house and a in the bathroom of all places. Um, and um, so when she walks Read out. Read the book, right? Um, <laughs> right. Um, she makes a comment. At, it, it's a Harry Potter reference when she's screaming at him to get out of the bathroom. And um, mm-hmm. so when he comes, she comes out, he's standing there with uh, a, a Harry Potter mug of coffee because it's really cold outside. And he's mm-hmm. like, well, you know, I'm sorry I scared you and here's, a coffee mug and it's got Harry Potter on it. And it's one of those moments of she's just like completely flustered that he's literate, of course, because there's always that joke about, you know, they can't be literate and that good looking. Right. Um, Which we know that that's absolutely not true. Um, Absolutely. He's, he's also, her comment is he's also good at nerd banter, which was really fun to write that line because he makes a comment about, um, about her her Harry Potter remark. And so she's it was just that really sweet moment of they, they get each other um, mm-hmm. and on a level that's just instant. So, yeah, that was one of my favorites. You know, and it's funny because you segue, segued nicely into my, se- uh, my next question. Have one of your secondary characters in a book kind of ever tried to take over the book? And if so, how did you kind of get them back in line? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, that's what's – it is hard because um, I, I wrote a book a few years ago. I sold to Soulmate Publishing called Waiting for Mr. Right, and mm-hmm. there was a character in there that was um, could be really dominant, and I had to basically just keep pulling her back. Um, and now mm-hmm. she's in the second book that I'm editing right now. <laughs> but she was such a strong force that I actually had to make my character in the book, the heroine, chew her out is how I got mm-hmm. her to back Kinda up. Kind of get her back in line. <laughs> right. So you got to get up on her. Because, yeah, we, we kind of had to. And, and because she, but that's her personality in the book. She's pushing this heroine to take out control of her life, and she's one of those people that's going, come on, you can do this. You know, why are you sitting there? And finally the heroine just had to turn on and say, you know, knock it off. Um, and that would have been really easy for her to take over. We all have friends like that. That would sometimes we right. turn around and say, you know, sit down. A larger I'm than life. To you. Yeah, and we love them for now, it. Patricia. But sometimes we have to say stop. <laughs> Enough, right? <laughs> now, Patricia, were there any characters in Burning with Desire that centered on any real life people? And if so, did they notice? No, not any real life people, but I did um bring about a subject that's really dear to me and that's adoption. Um mm-hmm. and that's based on my husband and I decided back in 2010 that we wanted to expand our family. We felt like we weren't done 
um, and we'd mm-hmm. had a couple of miscarriages, and we decided to adopt. And so it was the a little bit of the heartbreak that goes along with that. Um, and mm. we ended up adopting out of foster care here in Bear County. Um, and, you know, it was that process of you kind of have to put a, a little bit of that sadness in there. Even though adoption mm-hmm. can be a wonderful thing, um, there's also a sadness that goes with it. I mean, there is a loss right. somewhere. So I did get to bring that reality into it. Um, but um, on based on specific characters, uh, I did base my hero from Burning with Desire on Jensen Eccles from uh, Supernatural. Um, because, mm, okay. you know, it's Jensen Eccles. Um, <laughs> and he's a fellow Texan. So I thought, you know, let's throw that in there. And then I based the girl, the heroine on, or the woman, on uh, Gina Rodriguez who's in Jane the Virgin. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, and I really, just, I, love I really, show. really like I her. I across that I show. Really, it's awesome. <laughs> I know. And you think it's such a weird title. You're like, what? And then you're right. watching it. You're going, oh, my gosh. Um, what a great show. So I guess I was mm-hmm. in a CW mood when I was picking these, <laughs> these inspirations, these muses. Um, hey, whatever works. But, yeah, it really does. But, um, it was funny. Um, it those were the real people I based it on, but I don't know either one of them. Um, although they are more than welcome to call, and I'd be glad to take them out for a burger or something. Um, but um, it it was uh, that's who I based it on. But nobody in my personal life, no. Gotcha. Now, before we go too far, I wanted to let listeners know that you can call us at 646-200-4071. And I know many of our listeners out there, uh, if you'd like to check out Patricia's website during the show so you can find out more about her, uh, definitely go to her website. It's www.patriciawfisher, and that's F-I-S-C-H-E-R dot com. So, Patricia, um, what kind of or what types of scenes are your most favorite to write? I like to write about the awkwardness of learning about somebody. Um, Mm -hmm. We all, we all, you know, like dating, basically, I guess, and just the awkwardness of it um, because it's so fun to watch. Of course, it's just gut wrenching to go through, Um, but it's that just human nature of wanting to get to know someone and yet um, being afraid to ask certain questions or what have you. So I kind of like to see where people go and getting to know Mm -hmm. each other. I like to see the process of all that. Yeah. Now, what do you write first, the story or the title, and then why? Gosh, um, a lot of times I write the story first. Uh, and then the title can change uh, during that. I've had one idea that uh, I came up with, and I haven't finished it, but it was a light paranormal, and um, it, it came up with the title. And uh, because I haven't finished it, I don't want to say, but uh, it, it was one of those fun moments of that would be kind of a fun book. What would that be about? You know, you've come up with a title. But most of the time, it's it's the story first, and the, and I have the titles have changed on me mm-hmm. during the story. Because what you think <laughs> you're going to start with, you don't end up with. Yeah, we certainly have all been there. <laughs> yes, yes, very much. Now, yeah, I I know as an author, Patricia, in you know, in writing a novel, you pour so much of yourself uh, into your work. And developing a thick skin when you're an author is a lot easier said than done sometimes. Um, right. What was one, if you've had one, what was one of like the hardest criticisms about your writing that you received and how did you overcome it? And then what was one of the best? Okay, um, let's see. Well, we'll start with the good news. So uh, one of my very, my very first book I put out, um, The Waiting for Mr. Wright, um, I some of the girls, the the teachers at my kid's school was saying, you wrote a book? And, oh, wow, well, where is it? Mm-hmm. And I told them where it was. And um, one of the best ones was I was walking down the hall. I'd done volunteer or something. And then this teacher saw me, and she comes running down the hallway at me. And she's like, oh, my gosh, 
that was the most amazing book. I only meant to read like two chapters. I set up all weekend and read that. And and she was just all excited. And I, I leave it with a cliffhanger. And she's asking me, so tell me what, you know, and, and please tell me you're writing the second book. That was that was better than any, you know, five-star review because she was so invested uh, in the characters. And then, well, another good oh, one was too, was I had a friend of I know. I, I had a friend of mine come up to me and say, well, what are you going to do with this character? I said, what do you mean? And, she, and she's like, you can't just leave her hanging like that. And this was a different one. And I said, like, yeah, I can. She's like, no, you can't. You have to fix it. You have to make it better. And I was like, okay, I guess I will make this better. So um, get on over there and fix it. <laughs> I know, fix it. One of the you one know, of the so worst easy ones, though. To do all that, you know, just oh hey, just go write something. Just go write something. Just go throw it in. Um, one of the worst ones was I was just starting as a writer, and this is back when you when you entered contests, you had to print mm-hmm. the print the, the oh, pot, gosh, so it should be so you know, fifty that. pages, right? And so you would send for five, however, entries, and then you had to print the. It, it was just like this huge ginormous envelope you had to send and so I remember getting back from uh, get your stiletto in the door contest and this was right when chiclet like everyone wanted to write chiclet and um, I remember thinking I was going to get the most amazing reviews and it was they were all going to love me like we all do when we first start writing mm-hmm. because we're the most mm-hmm. amazing they've been waiting for us to send our stuff and right. I, I pull out the very f- <laughs> I pull out the very first review and it says, I, in big capital letters, someone wrote across the top of the judge's sheet, I hate reading first-person stories. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking, it's a chick lit contest. <laughs> it's like saying, I hate sci-fi, and you judged a sci-fi contest. It's like, I don't right. understand why you're judging this. <laughs> and I felt so defeated. I was like, well, mm. what did I do wrong? It's like you didn't do anything wrong. And the way mm-hmm. I fixed it is I went to my writer's group, my San Antonio Romance Authors group, and I said, every meeting, we have monthly meetings, and it was, okay, who has bad news and who has good news? And everybody gets to dump out, you know. And it's cool because we get to see, everyone goes, yep, I've been there, I've done, you know, that's cool, this is what you do. And you go to your friends, you, I, I call them my writer peeps, to mm-hmm. say, yes, you're fine, you submitted, you did something more than someone else who's saying they're going to, you know, blow that, blow that judge off. They don't even, they shouldn't mm-hmm. even be judging. You need to report that back to the contest. I mean, those kind of things. And with that, you find that you're not just floating around feeling miserable for yourself. Um, it's, it's one of those things that you're, you have people saying, okay, that's just a bump in the road. This is how you get it, and then move forward. So being in a writer's group and a critique group is just tremendously helpful. I think for anyone who's in the creative field, I think you need that to yeah, basically absolutely. say you're not crazy for doing it because we all sometimes wonder why we're basically throwing our guts on the table all the time. That's it's true. Hard. Throwing yourself on the sword. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't exactly. And, and we keep doing it. That's the crazy part. Mm, yeah, you think we would kind of at some point in time go, hey, this is, you know. But, yeah, yeah it's in our blood. What can we do? You, you can't so, help it. It's just who we are. You know, I've been on your website, and you've got some really fun things on your website. So can you tell us a little bit more about what readers can find when they go to your website? Well, let's see. Um, I know that I need to update it, so you know my apologies on that. Um, <laughs> I've got four kids, and some days it's like, oh, that's right, I needed to update my website. <laughs> um, so, hey, you, no. you're lucky if you uh, were able to get a shower in some of those days. You have four <laughs> kids. Oh my gosh! I was so excited. I got to shave my legs this week. I was super jacked about that. <laughs> um, I have um, things on here about. I, I'm part of a group called Listen to Your Mother. I will be uh, mm-hmm. in a reading with them this next couple of weeks, so I get to do that again. Um, we have my book contacts, of course, and then there's things on there about uh, when I'm on the San Antonio Living segment. Um, and they've been tremendous about letting me come on and basically just t- you know, present any book I want. Um, and they've just been wonderful. So, I mean, on there there's some – 
really nice pictures and um, my books and uh, and just basically just kind of fun stuff. I uh, there's this, this great website called brownielocks.com, and they mm-hmm. have all these crazy holidays, so or observances. <laughs> so I get to go on there and I'll find like you know National Curmudgeons Day or you know oh, Happy yeah. Penguin Day, and, like Butterscotch you know. Day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, you know, National Brownie Margarita Day which, with ice cream day, right? <laughs> right with sprinkles. How come all my you know, favorite days are food? Know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know, right? Or you know, hug an engineer day, even though they don't want you to day. You know that kind of thing. Exactly. It's, it's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it's it's fun, and um, but there's there's a really sweet story in there about uh, my great grandmother who was. Uh, the very first storyteller in my life, and she just hmm. um, she was just one of those wonderful, wonderful people that um, you know, she just knew how to tell a story, and she just I don't know it, I heard the same stories over and over again from her, and they never got old. You know, she just knew how to tell. And that is a good storyteller, and I mean not everybody can do yeah. that. It's kind of like an art, you know. And she she always adds something each time, so I don't know if it was just because she. Forgot a detail, or she just decided to throw it in there. You know, it, you really don't know. <laughs> You're like, hey, wait a second. Two weeks ago, it was, it yeah. was in Ireland. It was in the Yucatan. What happened? That's right. Hey, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> Always fun, though. No. Always fun. So, Patricia, what's a guilty pleasure that you have that not many people know about? Oh, not many people know about? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, let's see. Um, that's kind of funny. I usually just throw it all out there. So I have a, um, I've had a terribly huge crush on John Stamos since he was on General Hospital, <laughs> um, which everybody knows. I mean, who doesn't? Uh, and now I mean, even more people know. Wow, the man doesn't age. It's like wow. He doesn't. Did you? Did you? Where was you the know, show I, that was on? Was it Grandfather? Or Grandfather. Grandfathered, yeah. Yes. I love I loved that him show. On that. <laughs> well, he was just on an episode of Who Do You Think You Are? Um mm-hmm. it was on TLC. And um it was really very touching. It was very sweet. Um he got to meet his paternal grandfather's family back oh, in Oh wow. Like he met, you know, first cousins and um it was this, it was really touching and it was just wonderful. But I mean, I was sitting there laughing because he was he's so charming and he was talking to someone and I looked at my husband and I said, How does anybody divorce him? What is wrong? What happened? <laughs> and I'm sure they had he their reasons, be a but it's like cook wow. because we just haven't found it yet. <laughs> Maybe he just doesn't fold his laundry. Maybe he just leaves his laundry all over the you know, yours. The There's gotta be something really huge. That's all I gotta say. I guess. <laughs> wow. Um, him, I love, um, oh, I love bad 50s black and white monster movies. That was one of my biggest guilty pleasures. I will watch <laughs> Tarantula and Them and the original thing with James Arness um, and all those really great, ridiculously bad um, mm. monster movies. One of my guilty pleasures, wow. for sure. Okay, you sound mm-hmm. like my mom, because my mom likes all those, like, ridiculously campy, weird, bizarre movies, like, you know, uh-huh. like, um, Godzilla versus, like, Piranha. It's, like, always oh, a weird, yeah. freakish pairing, like, you know, the octopus versus the, you know, eight-legged, you know, tarantula. It was just something like, Mom, what are you watching? And so she really does love, like, those, you know, those ridiculous – and she's riveted. I mean, she's sitting there staring like, this is the best thing ever. And I'm like, okay. well, I And I mean – Well, I laugh I, because – One time um, I actually I, was, like, watching her with Sharknado, and, and it's like after that I couldn't say anything because it was one of those things where it's like a train wreck. You can't look away. It's so ridiculous and so silly. It's so bad. You love it. <laughs> Well, there was a great movie in the '60s called Piranha, and um, it, it, it I they did a remake, which was 
which was terrible. But because it was, mm-hmm. it, they were trying to be sort of serious and really just ridiculously bloody. But the the one in the '60s, um, they filmed it not too far from where I live in San Marcos at a place called Ocarina Springs, which is now part mm-hmm. of um, Texas State University um, in their marine studies program. And but back then, you could take these glass bottom boats out there, and there was kind of this little carnival thing that went with it. But they filmed out there, and the best line in the whole movie. So, of course, there's the developer who doesn't really believe the piranha are around and blah, blah, blah. And he's having this huge <laughs> party on the water, right? Of so, course he is. <laughs> so the fish show up, and this guy, this guy, we'll call him Bill, has um, a butler-type guy that walks up to him and says, um, sir, and Bill is being all hoity-toity because he's talking to a senator or something. And he says, what is it? And he says, the fish, sir. And Bill says, what? He said, they're eating the guests, sir. <laughs> like, <laughs> right your line. Life, sir. I quit, sir. totally deadpanned it. Oh, it was great. Oh. It was so great. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you, are, you and I are actually both going to be going to the RT Book Lovers Convention, May 2nd through the yes. 7th in Atlanta. Yes. So um, tell me one thing that you just really enjoy about the uh, going to the RT Book Lovers Convention and why. Well, I love being around the energy of the other authors. And I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm a decent extrovert, but I really kind of love going and sitting and listening to people's mm-hmm. projects and the, their creative minds. Um, and how their you know projects are coming up with and all this. I mean that's just a ton of fun uh, to be able to go and listen and be in that type of atmosphere and see people I haven't seen and except mm-hmm. you know every, every once in a while at conventions or online or or th- that sort of thing. Um, I'll be teaching a class right. with Sheila English um, about mm-hmm. how to increase your uh, presence in um, radio and um, TV. So I mean I'm looking forward to doing all that and meeting people and talking. I, I think it's a, it'll be a fun, fun topic. And, and the, they always have great workshops. So yeah, yeah you, they could, really you can do. always continue to learn. I mean, anybody who says they've stopped learning, have, they just need to stop writing. So, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm, for I'm any of you out there that are not familiar with the RT Book Lovers Convention and you want to check it out, definitely go to www.rtconvention.com. So, Patricia, we're almost out of time. So can you let listeners know a little bit about what your next project is going to be and then how they can interact with you online? Sure. Um, I'm at uh, Patricia W. Fisher uh, on Facebook. Um, my Twitter handle is uh, P-A-W-F-1067. I'm also on Instagram at Patricia W. F. Author. Um, and then upcoming things are I'm writing a sequel to The Waiting for Mr. Wright. I'm actually doing the second rounds of edits right now. I'll be doing that with Soulmate. Mm-hmm. I have another paranormal, well, a, a contemporary project coming out with Soulmate in January. And then we're also talking over at Tule about some other projects in Marietta. Um, mm-hmm. And then, let's see, I've got my indie series that's uh, Tuscany, Texas, that's set <laughs> in the Texas Hill Country. And mm-hmm. um, working on one or two of those, I've had friends saying, where are those? What are, you know, so there's only so many hours <laughs> in the day. Um, but uh, And then juggling four kids and two dogs and Got to say hi to my husband every once in a while. So, um, you know, it's always <laughs> I hear <busy>. you. <laughs> now, you're going to be, get um, tell us, <laughs> one day, tell us a little bit about your 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 first interview that's going to be coming up on Readers Entertainment, your debut interview. Tell us a little bit about that and I, let listeners know when that is. That My debut interview will be next Thursday, so a week from today, and I'll be talking to Harlequin author Sasha Summers. Um, and she will be talking about her newest book coming out. It's a paranormal. Um, and uh, she's also got other modern contemporaries, and she's just a fabulous, uh, wonderful author, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to everyone meeting her, if you haven't already. Great. So, <laughs> yes. 
Well, Patricia, I am glad and very honored to have been able to sit down and chat with you tonight. It has been a blast. This is our first time actually really getting to sit down and powwow, so it's been really cool. Thank you for yeah. allowing me to interview you, Miss New Host. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And we'd like to thank week. our... All right. Well, we'd like to thank our listeners out there for joining us tonight here at Readers Entertainment Radio. Don't forget, you can find us at www.readersentertainment.com. You can stop by. You can leave a comment about tonight's show. We'd love to hear from you. So I am your host, Lisa Watson, saying be happy, be inspired, and have a great evening. Good night, everyone. Good night, Patricia. Good night. This show brought to you by Circle of Seven Productions, www.cosproductions.com.